Well, hi there, food friends. It's Kevin. And Marianne behind the camera. And welcome to Cavalcade of Food. And you know what, sis? Today we're going to do a little vintage appliance tour. We're going to look at stand mixers. We've had some requests. Um, and we try to showcase the collection. Um, so, before I start kind of going down the line here on these mixers, everybody, I did a kind of a little pan of the mixers in the collection. So, I'm going to show that right now. So we are looking at stand mixers today. And here's just a kind of a sweep of the mixers in the collection at Cavalcade. And we'll start with Hamilton Beach, a Dormeyer, a KitchenAid, a Kenmore, Sunbeam. Dormeyer, Westinghouse, Hamilton Beach, Sunbeam, Betty Crocker, General Mills, another Sunbeam, and I believe that's a Westinghouse right next to it, and then the chrome one with the yellow bowl is a Mixmaster. Okay. Picking up here, there's the Westinghouse. There's that Chrome Sunbeam Mixmaster. Mixmaster. Dormeyer. Mixmaster. That one's relatively recent. Another General Mills Betty Crocker. Hamilton Beach. KitchenAid, a Montgomery Ward Signature, here's a General Electric Triple Whip, Hamilton Beach Chrome, Kenmore, Hamilton Beach, And this is a General Electric Sunbeam Mixmaster, Hamilton Beach. And here, we'll pick this up with a Sunbeam Chrome, General Electric, Dormeyer Power Chef. There's a GE Triple Whip. Sunbeam Mixmaster, KitchenAid, Hamilton Beach, another Sunbeam Mixmaster, Sunbeam, and then at the end there is a, another KitchenAid. So I'll pull a few of these down. And we'll take a closer look at some of them right here on Cavalcade of Food. So I hope that kind of gives you an overall flavor of all the mixers. Um, I couldn't put them, pull them all down because there's just not enough room on the counter for them all. So I just sort of took a selection uh, of the, the mixers um, to showcase. So we're going to start with probably what I would call the quintessential American stand mixer and the ones that really brought a lot of mixers into American homes and we're going to start with the Sunbeam Mixmaster and Mayor I think these are probably familiar to a lot of our food friends out there and you know I don't know what mixer maybe your mother or your grandmother had but 
chances are probably pretty good that a lot of for a lot of you what they had was a Sunbeam mix master and Sunbeam Corporation was headquartered in Chicago Illinois and they got into the appliance business fairly early on um, I believe the original name of the company was the Chicago Flexible Shaft Company and they started making mixers. Now there are earlier ones that predate even these, okay, but these are just a sampling of what I have in the collection. And these are, I think, what sort of has become an iconic figure when you think of a kitchen appliance from the 1950s. So Mayor, th these three sort of show a certain evolution, as it were, into the design of the mix master. So this is an earlier one of the three. This is the oldest one. And you can see a lot of the elements are the same, but one thing that Sunbeam did is they had this dial, you know, at the end. And not only did it give you 10 speed variations, they put on there what those variations would do. So like here, the low speed for adding ingredients and folding. Okay, number two, mashing potatoes. Number three, mixing cookies and fruit cakes. Four, juicing citrus. Five, whipping potatoes. Six, whipping cream. Anyways, and it goes on and on up to 10, but to help you like, well, how, what speed should I set it on? It's all there for you. Now here the, the label has sort of gotten scuffed over the years, but this is just sort of an applique that they put on. And uh, in the handle, it says Sunbeam Mixmaster. But one of the features of the Mixmaster was always the bowl. Now these earlier ones, you can see, Marianne, there's two holes in the platform here, in the yeah. stand. and you would move the turntable depending on the bowl you were using. So the mixer came with two bowls, a large bowl and a small bowl. And if you look on the bottom, this one even says glass bake made for sunbeam. I don't know if the camera can pick it up, but it's embossed right there. So glass bake, um, Pyrex, um, anchor hocking, uh, a lot of the glass companies made bowls for the mixer, the mixer company. So um, if you were going to use the large bowl, you would put the, the turntable on the outside hole because how a mix master works is you wanted a beater to be up alongside this edge. So with that when it was running, it would help turn the bowl. As you're mixing, you can turn the bowl with one hand and everything blends from the side. Then, if you were going to use the small bowl, you would put it in the center. And of course the bowl had this rim on the bottom and it would go into this indentation so it would kind of lock in. And there's your center bowl position. So that was always sort of how the Mixmaster worked. And of course, you got this. And this is how to get the most out of your Sunbeam Mixmaster. And there, there's this particular model right there on the cover. And of course, recipes for cakes. Um, and all the accessories, uh, great waffle recipe, by the way, Sunbeam waffles are about my favorite, I think, of all the waffle recipes. You can see here, you had a meat grinding attachment, you had a, a food chopper, uh, a drink mixer, a slicer shredderer, look, even a butter churn, Marianne, colander, can opener, a bean slicer. Now, how often would someone use? Well, you know, a lot of these were on farms. An ice cream freezer, coffee grinder, knife sharpener, a polisher, 
a pea sheller of all things, okay? A potato peeler. These were all attachments you could get for the Sunbeam Mixmaster. And then in the back, these were all the different parts that you could order if you, you know, a lot of times a bowl would break because they're glass mm -hmm. and whatever, and you could send for Sunbeam and get replacement parts. So while Sunbeam wasn't the first mixer, it really started, it, it, it was the dominant brand for many years in terms of stand mixers and hand mixers for that for that matter. Well, then we went from this to this. And you can see while they're similar, the handle here is a little bit larger. It's actually the body of the mixer is a little bit larger. And if you look at it, I think you'll see that it almost has a rocket shape. Do you see that? Yeah. Look at these fins here on the back. And again, they kept with the dial being in the back here, telling you what each speed is good for. But unlike the previous mixer, Marianne, the turntable is fixed. Where this one would move, depending on what size bowl you, d you used, what Sunbeam ended up doing was instead of moving the turntable, they would actually move the position of the mixer. So look down here. See how it says small and large? Yeah. So if you wanted to use the large bowl, you would slide this. But get a shot of the mixer itself, Mayor. Look what happens when I move that. You see? Can you see the mixer moving over? Yep. Yeah. So now we're going to set it to large. The mixer kind of goes off center, and when you put the bowl in, it's on the beater. The rounded beater is on the side. So you'll see there's two shapes. There's a rounded beater, kind of a cone shape, and then a square shape beater. Well, the reason this is rounded this way is because it hugs the side of the bowl. If it was like this, it would scrape the side of the bowl. Um, and, and so, and you'll also see that on the bottom here is a round, uh, kind of a nylon button. When these are down, that nylon button grabs the bot, comes in contact with the bottom of the bowl. And so now what would happen is the bowl would turn, okay, um, when the automatically when the beater was on. I'm going to try, let me plug this in, see if we can get it to do that. See? And that's because that nylon button there is rubbing up against the side of the, or the bottom of the glass bowl, and it's turning it. Look at that sunbeam mixing action, Mayor. So anyways, a great design. And they held with that for many, many years. And of course, you got your book. So they updated the book. Look at her with her cake. Just so proud as you please. Okay? And how to get the most out of your sunbeam mix master. They used to say that if you used a mix master versus uh, hand mixing, you know, your cakes were so much lighter and higher. Mm, yeah, they probably were, probably whipped more air into it. And I love inside, of course, they show you all the other Sunbeam appliances. Uh, and I've got, I think, all of most of these. And we'll have to do, we'll have to do a future uh, appliance video on that. Then the next sort of stage was this. Now here it is in chrome. You could get it in white, of course. And again, it had it had metal bowls, it had the conical shaped and square shaped beaters, and it was just sort of look at the front, just sort of updated, okay. And then in the back, you had a little bit of gold trim here, but again, still kind of rocket shaped, and you had your ten or this was a twelve speed. Um, I think this one just has this one just has 10 
This one has 12 speeds, okay? So a little bit more deluxe, and they kept refining it. And of course, they still make Sunbeam Mix Masters to this day. Now, another competitor to Sunbeam, and they had many, was Hamilton Beach. And Hamilton Beach been making mixers for a long time. And Hamilton Beach, here's a white one and one in chrome. And uh, the white one would be a little bit of an older model. And then this one's probably, oh, a few years after that. But they had their speed control right here on the side. But also telling you what each speed was best for. You had this little um, piece here pops out. And that's where you would use if you had an attachment. And what they did is they had a turntable that moved. If you look at this little red knob, it says bowl control. And that's exactly what it did. So large was that away, small was that way. It was the same idea as the sunbeam where you wanted it had, you see, you have rounded beaters there to go up against the uh, side of the bowl. But. Hamilton Beach had this unique beater design. One piece, okay? You'll see here, it has a nylon button, just like the Sunbeam had, which helps grab the bottom of that bowl and helps turn it. But you can see that this was all one piece. So no two separate beaters, and this would come off and uh, went on just like this and then you lock it in place. And there's your Hamilton Beach. Whoop, I guess I didn't put that on very well, did I? So, let's try that again. There we go. Didn't have it in all the way. And of course, like any good mixer, you had your owner's manual, there she, oh, she's just so happy. Her life is just totally fulfilled. She's got this mixer and um, with recipes. And look at this, this still has your five-year guarantee. Who remembers punch cards, right? That's, that, that's from back in the day. And then um, uh, you would fill that out and send it in, but there's all your recipes. Model K, that's what this one is. Model K food mixer. Now, a sunbeam, sort of a sunbeam wannabe, uh, was the Dormeyer. Dormeyer was also based in Chicago, Illinois, and they were a lower price alternative to the Mixmaster. And I've got a couple of Dormeyers here. And by the way, um, Dormeyer. See how it swings, Mare? Not no. up, but kind of sideways. And by the way, with a lot of these mixers, you could release them from the stand and use them as a hand mixer, although they're heavy as heck, okay? Um, I guess if you wanted to have a good arm workout, you could use them. Uh, hand mixers generally were much lighter. But this is a Power Chef. This is a Dormeyer Power Chef. And you can see there's the there's the turntable spins. You've got your small bowl. Does not identify the manufacturer. That's a large bowl. A large bowl. It doesn't say who the manufacturer of those bowls are. I'm not sure who made them for Dormeyer, but I'll bet you one of our food friends knows. And then here you had a here's your your speed. There's a little arrow here, and this turns, um, and it goes up to 10. And they kind of copied the um, the Sunbeam uh, mixing speeds. Uh, uh, and so that was your Dormeyer. Now here's a um, little bit of a fancier whoop, version. This is called the, this is called the Power Chef. This is called the Silver Chef. Can you guess why? Because it's silver. <laughs> Very good. 
What's that red button for? That, whoop, did you see what happened? Yep, the, that, the that beaters is, come out. Yes, that's your beater ejector. Okay. Okay, so that's what that does. Um, but you see how it says small right here? I don't know if the camera can pick it up. Right there, yeah. small. Now if I, now it says large. Mm -hmm. So this is, you actually, the Sunbeam had a lever. With Dormeyer, you could just simply manually, kind of it clicks into place, depending whether or not you were using your large bowl or your small bowl, to sort of move it like that. And then these are metal bowls, which are nice because they don't chip or break. And here's the Dormeyer Electric Mix Treasures. Okay, and there's your Dormeyer manual to use with your new Dormeyer mixer. And then here is a Westinghouse mixer. And Westinghouse, I always thought their stuff had such great style. And look at these bowls were made for Westinghouse by Pyrex. And here's your, your turntable. You can see this has dual positions. So you would move it out for your large bowl, in for your small bowl. And then the Westinghouse had a, this flips open, and you would use this for your attachments. And they had a juicer and, you know, all the standard stuff. And then your speed control was this dial on right on the top. And the way that they, the way that they calibrated it is they did it weird, where it started with one and it went to four, eight, 12, 16, and 20, went up to 20. And I guess it was just kind of, um, you know, variable speeds in between. But they could say they had a 20 speed model. Now, I've got a couple of old KitchenAids here, and I think now we think of KitchenAid as sort of the, the standard mixer. Um, and a lot of people have KitchenAid mixers in their home and they're good mixers. Um, when they were built by Hobart Manufacturing back in the day, they were really good mixers. And these are some early ones. Uh, this one is a Model 3B, and this is a Model 3C. And of course, the KitchenAid mixer worked by sort of the beater itself would turn one way, and this the whole beater holder would turn the other way. So it was like a dual action mix, which is what kind of KitchenAid is famous for. And now the KitchenAid bowls look a little bit different. Here you can see they were quite tapered at the time. And the idea was it would help whatever you were mixing kind of keep falling to the bottom. Uh, just as made in USA for KitchenAid. So I don't know who made these, but um, the beater basically would go all the way around the bowl and come pretty darn close to the side. Uh, same idea here. Uh, these are both 10 speeds and on the top kind of printed right in was what all the speeds did or was best for. And um, you know what? They have strong motors and uh, they're a little noisy, but these are still good working mixers. And I have a manual for the 3, 3B here. Meet Miss K. Didn't, did you, didn't you have a teacher named Miss yeah, K? Yeah, my sixth grade teacher. Your sixth, well, I think this is a different Miss K because I don't remember looking like that. But Miss K was the KitchenAid home uh, economist who, look at her, isn't she happy? Look at that cake, okay? Um, and she's gonna show you how to get all these wonderful foods out of your KitchenAid mixer. There they had an ice cream churner, uh, you know, all kinds of accessories. And KitchenAid mixers to this day have a lot of accessories that you can get. Then I've got some odds and ends here, Mayor. Um, 
This is a General Electric triple whip. Get a load of that. I mean, if three, if two beaters are good, then three's got to be better, right? Right. Right. So, anyways, that was sort of GE's idea, and they. The triple whip was made for many years in different alliterations. Um, this one is an earlier one, and again, it has a it's removable from the base, and you can use it as a hand mixer. This one's got the speed control on the side. No telling what speed is for which thing, but the other thing, and I don't know, right here, there's a light. When you turn this mixer on, there's a light that actually goes down into the bowls, um, I guess in case you can't see what it is you're mixing. Uh, but it's an interesting mixer, uh, and I haven't used this one yet, so I have to, we'll have to try it out. Sort of in the same vein in terms of the design, because these almost look like they're sideways because the beaters come out of you know, the front of the mixer is the handle rather than it being on the top like the others. But the idea was that this would make for a better hand mixer uh, when you would take it off the stand. Here's a little Kenmore from Sears Roebuck. And <clears throat> this one literally only has three speeds, one, two, and three. And that's it. And it's a, uh, you know who would know who made this? Our friend Hans. Hans, if you know who made this Kenmore mixer, please let me know. He probably knows who made all of these. And then, of course, since we have Sears represented, I got to have Montgomery Wards represented. And this mixer <clears throat> is special to me primarily for a couple of reasons. One, we love things from Montgomery Wards. Here's the owner's manual. But it also belonged to Mrs. Kelly the mother of dear friends of ours from way back since we were kids, right, Marianne? Right. And um, uh, after Mrs. Kelly passed away, uh, her daughter, my dear friend, passed this along to me. And so this is a great part of the collection. And so I think of her, I think of Mrs. Kelly, uh, whenever I see this, and it's great to have it in the collection, this is probably from the early 1970s, and I'm not sure. If someone has a date on this mixer and who made it, uh, please share. But I love the, it has, a, it has a rare power control, speed control, and it's sort of built into the body like that. Very cool the way that it works. So that's the Montgomery Ward Deluxe Stand Mixer. And they have a small bowl, large bowl on the front. Yeah, oh, there it is. Yeah, thank you, I, because I, I couldn't see it. So here, we're going to use the large bowl. You slide it this way. You use the small bowl. You slide it that way. That's actually a real easy um, control to use. And then I threw this in, Marianne. This is a Betty Crocker. So, of course, in the early 50s, General Mills, who who owned Betty Crocker, um, and, uh, you know, Betty Crocker cake mixes and Bisquick and all that stuff, gold medal flour, they came out with a line of appliances, and one of them was the stand mixer here, and it is really kind of streamlined beautiful. Look at this chrome piece on the front, and then you have your speed control right up here. So going from starting with off and then you can just with your fingers just turn it all the way to 10. It says right on the side sponsored by Betty Crocker. This one also has a timer on it. And I've got a um, oh a Hamilton Beach over there that also has a timer on it. Because sometimes something would say Beat on medium for four minutes. Well, you could set this timer to four minutes and leave it on, and then you'd know your four minutes is up, and it was time to turn the beater off. 
Here's your turntable. Again, it slides um, from, but I can't remember how the, there it goes. You just slide it like this, okay? And mixing the Betty Crocker way. And there she is looking very serious, I might add. Um, and here is all the recipes and the and again big surprise attachments galore and other Betty Crocker products by the way waffle iron percolator deep fryer toaster iron so they had a whole line it looks like someone tore out the coupon for uh, gold metal flour there in the back but anyway so this is the Betty Crocker mixer beautiful bowls uh, made by Pyrex, General Mills Incorporated, Minneapolis, Minnesota, made in USA. So it has these beautiful Pyrex bowls here. But I just love the design of it. I think it's a, it's a beautiful looking mixer. So that is just a sampling of mixers that we have here in the Cavalcade collection. And... Tell us the mixers that have been a part of your life growing up and maybe what you have now and like to use. If you have a stand mixer, um, share those stories with us. We love to hear it. So I'm going to say thank you to Mary Ann for working the camera today. You're Thanks. welcome. And I'm going to say thank you to all of our food friends out there for spending some time with us. On